Part 9 of my inspiration series on model railways, featuring large O-gauge layouts. Part 6 of my inspiration series showed you how you can participate in a large project as an individual. If you haven't seen it yet, check out the link above. Hi, I'm Andrew Gebby. You're watching the Heritage and Model Rail channel. And if this is the first time to this channel, become a subscriber. And don't forget the bell icon so that you can be notified when new content appears. Here you can view the O-Gage layout Durham Street, exhibited by Scarborough and District Railway Modellers. Durham Street depicts a busy northeast engine shed in the early 1960s with new diesel locos mixing with rapidly disappearing steam engines. This show is the first public exhibition of the layout having only been viewed previously at a local club event. The layout has been put together by four members who had no previous experience of modelling in O-Gage. It has taken three years to construct. It is a seven metre end-to-end -end layout with an unusual arrangement at each end of the six boards. As you look at the layout on the left, there is a short multi-track fiddle yard, which is a traverser. At the other end of the layout is an electrically driven turntable, which is part of the scenic display. All buildings are scratch built, with the main shed being constructed from a material called Fomex, glued together with pipe cement. The textured brick covering was sourced in grease and glued on with Yoohoo glue. Track is CNL fine scale with DCC control across four operators by Digitracks. Points are tortoise. There are two switch panels which are synchronized together. When a point is changed, it is reflected on the other panel and also on each hand controller. Yard lights are supplied by RM Electronics and items like the water tower were laser cut. Stock has been sourced from LH Loveless, Fine Scale Brass, 55H, Helljan, Dapol and Gladiator. My thanks to Ian Harper from the club for supplying the information. This O-Gage layout is Castle Morris, exhibited by the Inverness Model Railway Club. Castle Morris is a country terminus to fiddle yard O-Gage layout which can be operated from either the front or rear of the layout. It is set in the Northwest Midlands on the Cheshire Line, where both LNER and GWR stock can be seen. Goods traffic is mainly agricultural with short mixed trains hauled mostly by tank engines. The station is served by short passenger trains and also by a push-pull set and a steam rail motor. Control is DCC with most locos sound fitted. Some excellent buildings have been scratch built by one of the members. Eldersley Station, modelled in O-Gage and presented by the Air Model Railway Group. This station was built by the Glasgow Paisley Kilmarnock and Air Railway, later the G and SWR, in 1840 and survived into the 1960s under British Railways when it was demolished. It had four platform faces and over the years saw a wide diversity of locomotives and trains. The station depicted here is as built with station canopies and finished in G and SWR red. The canopies were removed at a later date and the final colour scheme was BR cream. The two X G and S W R signal boxes are in later B R colours. The layout is 36 feet long and 16 feet wide, excluding barriers. There are two main running lines in each direction, and two storage loops are provided for each direction. Due to space restrictions, the original Eldersley Station track plan has been modified insofar as all the adjacent loops and sidings have been omitted. The junctions, Paisley Canal lines at the north end and the Loch Winnock Loop Greenock lines at the south end have also been omitted. 
The station buildings and the signal boxes are the main scenic features of the layout and have been accurately modelled from the original G and SWR drawings. The layout can be operated by two operators running two trains simultaneously in each direction, plus an additional person whose duties include stewarding the layout and answering questions from the public. There are two fixed control panels, with one housing a two-channel DCC controller and the other with two DC controllers. The latter can be supplemented with a handheld controller. A variety of stock can be run covering the following periods. GNSWR, LMS, BR Steam and BR Green Diesel. This O and 16.5mm gauge layout is Talibont and Llanbriniglis Railway. A layout featuring three scenes representing a Welsh narrow gauge slate railway from the quarries to the exchange sidings. The name was taken from a village north of Aberystwyth but the layout is not a model of any particular line. These railways were built to transport slate down from the hills to ports or mainline railways and passenger carrying was often a secondary consideration. The model assumes the continuation of the slate traffic alongside a growing tourist passenger operation. The quarry area shows the foot of an incline and the slate dressing shed. From here the mineral line runs from Tranbrengris where the locomotives are changed to those suitable for journeys to Talibont and vice versa. This is also the upper terminus for public passenger services from Talibont. The line runs through some spectacular scenery over a river bridge to a passing loop where there is a branch to a granite quarry. The trains continue to the terminus and exchange sidings at Talibont where the slate is unloaded and empty wagons return to the quarry. Standard gauge wagons in the exchange siding allow the onlooker to contrast standard and narrow gauge stock. The locomotives are built from kits and include locomotives from the Talislin and Festiniog railways, the Penryn, Clamberis and Port de Norwalk quarry railways and even a small Scottish visitor from the Campbelltown and Macrahanish railway. The station building at Talibont is a model of Wharf Station and the engine sheds are based on those on the Talith Lynn Railway. Here you can view the O-gauge layout Loch Do, exhibited by Falkirk Model Railway Club. Loch Do is a fictitious remote terminus station in the Scottish Highlands. Depicting early 60s pre-beaching, it features Type 1 and Type 2 traction, hauling both freight and passenger traffic. The layout measures 16 feet by 2 feet, across four boards. Buildings are all scratch built. Track is Pico Code 80, with control by NLE Power Cab. Stock is Backman Brassworks, Helljan and MTK. Wagons are all kit built. My thanks to Jim Reed for the information. This O-gauge layout is Grindley Brook, exhibited by Hillingdon Railway Modellers. It is based on a fictional station set on the ex-London and North Western Railway LNWR line between Whitchurch and Chester in Shropshire. Although there was never a large station with a yard at Grindley Brook, the location was chosen as the point at which the railway crossed the Flangotland Canal. Only later did we discover that LMS had opened a halt at this junction in 1937. The scenic area has scratch-built buildings, signals and infrastructure. They have been brought together to create a typical NWR station of the early 1870s updated by the LMS and ultimately passed into BR ownership. The trains are formed of LMR stock with a sprinkling of WR working. The track is built from CNL components to the finest standard of 31.5mm gauge, 0MF. The track layout was determined by the overall curve of the layout which allows it to fit in place 
on one of the club's test tracks. Control is exercised by the signalman using a miniature lever frame with full mechanical interlocking requiring the drivers to follow the signal indications. Here you can view the O-gauge layout Craig Lang, exhibited by Cooper and District Model Railway Club. This layout represents a fictitious railway junction on the east coast of Scotland between the 1930s and 1960s, so as to run a wide variety of locomotives and coaching stock dating from pre-grouping to BR maroon periods. Most of the buildings are reproductions or representative of east coast structures. Much of the rolling stock is scratch or kit built. Additionally, there are some examples of ready to run green diesel locomotives. This O gauge layout is Falcon Road, exhibited by Ian Harper. Set in the outskirts of a busy city centre station in the London and North East region. Falcon Road is depicted in the early 1960s. The scenery reflects the approach to some of our major cities, where the railway uses tunnels to get into the city centre stations and goods yard. Falcon Road is a typical inner city terraced road, with a mixture of houses, the local pub, fish and chip shop, small factory, corner shops and a local garage all overlooking the railway cutting. Sound equipped locos are both ready to run and kit built including Pacifics and diesels of the era. The layout has working semaphore and ground signals all operated by the Digitrax DCC system handsets. The 16 foot by 2 foot scenic section is complemented by two 4 foot traverser boards and a hidden return section enabling realistic operation of O-gauge trains on a very small footprint, ideal for exhibitions. The overall footprint is 26 feet by 6 feet, allowing four operators to work the layout. With remote handsets we can operate from the front, interacting with visitors as well as from the back. This O-gauge layout is Crag and Moor, exhibited by Elgin Model Railway Club. Set in Speyside, the fictitious village and station at Crag and Moor takes its name from the distillery, which does exist. There was a railway line to the distillery, but the track plan bears no similarity to it, although the buildings are closely based upon those in the actual distillery. The time is the early 60s and a range of locomotives can be seen running from ex-LMS and LNER locomotives to early diesels. As the area is so far from central office, repainting sometimes takes a little time, so although all are BR numbered, early and late logos can be seen. Passenger traffic is served by three coach loco hold trains and a DMU and there is a wide variety of goods wagons including some of the Crag and Moor distillery's own stock, including a tanker of bulk whisky. The station, to a West Highland design, is on an island platform served by a footbridge from the nearby bus stop and car park, and the village can be seen in the background. Simple loco servicing facilities exist, and beyond the turntable are the cattle dock and coal yard, and there is also a goods line. Beyond the road bridge there is the signal box and access to the timber yard which can also deal with other goods on occasion with the line curving away to the distillery and places beyond. Track is all Pico and control is by NCE DCC equipment. The semaphore signals are operational, signal and point control being from a central control panel. Stock is added and removed with two cassette sections behind the scenic brake at the distillery. One cassette serving the upline and the other the downline. Here you can view the O gauge layout, Ur uh, La Triport, exhibited by John and Peter Smith. Ur uh, is a real town just inland from the resort and port of La Triport. 
but there was never a loco shed there. It was used as a plausible base for the layout, so a wide range of SNCF motive power from the 1950s could be displayed. The layout features an SNCF shed in the mid-1950s, based around Le Treport in France. The layout is O-gauge fine scale and uses lens DCC for control. It is 22 foot long by 3 foot wide, built on a slight curve to make it more interesting. Check out other content that I have by selecting the playlist. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you there.